Our next session is going to be by Mr. Haja, the CTO of uh, Rochester. So he goes by many monikers. He has Juggy Boy. His name is Haja. He also goes by Jason Springfield. So that's why on screen you're going to see Jason Springfield. Now, Mr. Haja doesn't really like to show his face. He's like an engine in the car. You don't really see it on a day to day basis, but it's there at the, and it's what drives the car forward. So he has a very interesting talk titled Cyber Espionage, State Hacking, and Defense Techniques. So I don't want to take up too much of time because I know he has a very interesting and long presentation ahead. So with that, over to you, Mr. Haja. Uh, hi, Aditya. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Um, this conference is a, it's a tremendous success and I'm so happy for the speakers and our sponsor, you know, AP University and uh, uh, um, colleges, institutions and companies, training centers. The, the love for Richardson and for our team is phenomenal. I've never seen this. Okay, they're basically coming to me with recommendations. How can you do this? Can you change this? You know, can you move forward with this technology? You know, the feedback I get is, is mind boggling. So without your input and support, I don't think um, um, would have succeeded. So a humble ball to all the speakers and uh, the presenters. And just to give you some statistics, um, we have almost over 1000 registrations around the world. And um, uh, many of the participants, they would love to have the recordings of the sessions and we'll definitely um, uh, accept the request and we will mail you the recordings at the end of the event. Right, uh, okay, uh, hey, I think I have a question for you. How do you stay so relaxed and uh, you know so fresh, man? I just envy you. Uh, I envy your enthusiasm I, and yep. I'm glad you think I look fresh. Right? Yes, I'm glad you think I look fresh and relaxed. But then I think it's just the camera playing tricks. I'm pretty, pretty. I'm not that relaxed. Right, right. Okay. I think uh, people love to you know, join just to see your face. All right. Um. Thank you. You're doing an amazing job, uh, uh, Aditya. All right, um, uh, so welcome everyone. I'm Haja, I'm the CTO of Rochester. And um, uh, okay, what I want to do today is, before I jump into the topic, hey, that's me. Seriously, man, that's, that's me. Um, many years ago, I still have that funky hairstyle. Now it's grown longer and I have to tie a ponytail and there's some tattoos like a real hacker. And that's it. So if you want to see uh, the best picture of Haja, you're looking at it. Thank you. Right. Um, okay. Uh, yesterday, um, we had interesting sessions. Okay. We had um, Edel uh, talking about privacy. We had uh, Dr. Vinisha talking about in, um, challenges in the education industry. And um, uh, at the end of the, for the day, Oh God, it was totally different. I usually go to RSA conference, black hat conferences. It's all dry and boring talk, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a slide after slide, presentation after presentations, all too much technical junk, right? And, um, uh, but last night, uh, Jyoti, she comes in and she talks about how to manage stress. And I was like, oh my God, I seriously need that. Because right now I'm a developer, I write codes. I write scripts every single day. I create applications and platforms and so on. So as you know, as a programmer, the one of the biggest challenge you have is bug fixing. So whenever you're coding and it doesn't compile, there's an error and you're searching the internet, talking to uh, bloggers and trying to fix something, you just can't. So until you fix the bug, you can't move to the next stage, right? So that's the stress that I have. And she is so calm and composed. She was so relaxed. I says, you know what, Raja, don't do anything. You know, take your fingers and flap and everything's going to be cool, okay? So I personally benefited from um, Jodi's sessions last night. I'm sure you guys as well. So anyway, uh, so what I want to do today is, uh, if you do, if it, you know, um, if you take the key takeaways from yesterday's presentations from all of these speakers, I want to put together into a nice lab and show you the actual implementation of those concepts. That'd be really great for you guys, right? Uh, example, artificial intelligence, deep fakes, um, uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, espionage and so on. All right, so let's start. 
Okay, the first thing is uh, cyber espionage. Now, what is cyber espionage? Uh, it's it's a cyber war. Cyber warfare. Yes, guys. Yes, I know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not taking a gun to a, the battlefield. Not anymore. It doesn't happen. Today, the war is fought using computers. And you have enemies that are completely hidden and stealth. You don't know who you're shooting. Okay. So this is much more difficult battle to win. Then you have an army and barge into a country and invade and start shooting. Seriously. Okay. Now, uh, the cyber war is already upon us. It's not going to happen. It's happening right now. Okay. Take it from me. It's there. With the potential to cause more strategic and economic damages and chaos through the world than any hot war in the past. Whether it's a Iraq war, whether it's a uh, it's an Afghanistan war, or you name it, but um, uh, Taliban. But this war, you're fighting a hidden enemy. So here is the thing: the key word you're looking at that particular slide is chaos, real chaos. You don't see the chaos. You go to McDonald's, you eating a nice burger. You um, you're having your lunch and you're watching a movie, Netflix. You don't see it. But behind the scenes, state actors. You call Iranians, you got North Koreans and Russia, you got Venezuela, and these, you know, state hackers. We're not, we're not going to use called them, um, um, you know, typical hackers sitting in a mother's basement eating a pizza. We call these guys professionals. So their job is only one thing: they don't want your money, they don't want your your, uh, your passwords to um, to log on and start shopping in Amazon. No, their job is to cause economic distress. A downfall. This is called um, uh, you want your um, position in the world stage to be up. That's the whole idea of cyber espionage. Now, every day, okay, Ras was talking about the attacks occurring in the university. He's right. Okay, he's managing 12,000 students in the university and um, he's struggling every single day. It's a battle against the students because students love to practice what they learn in the classroom about hacking in the corporate network. But in the cyber espionage, what you see is every day, China, Russia, and Iran hacks in the US government, defense contract computer systems, and it's on the rise. It's not going down, it's up. And um, with literally millions of attempts by the hackers to disrupt military, civilian operations almost every day around the world. How do Rochester know this? I'll, I'll share with you some of the data that we receive from the industry. Yes, we subscribe to that. We're working on a beautiful cyber intelligence platform. I'll, I'll take you through a tour of that as well. So what could be the next cold war? It's a cyber war. I want you to add this particular word before that you know, sentence. Hidden cyber war. You don't see it. It's not on CNN. It's not on uh, ABC News. It's not on New York Times, you know, flashing right at the headlines. But it's happening behind the scene. Okay, that's exactly why the Trump administrations and then the Pyongyang, Kong, North Korea, and they are worried, okay, uh, how it could play out in the real life. All right, so what is the US government is doing? Okay, now the US government has an um, arm, uh, um, I'm probably uh, many of the US uh, the participants, they know this. It's a US cyber command. In a, in a short sentence, in a nutshell, we call it a cyber com. Uh, it's a division within the Department of Defense, and its mission is only this: is to defend against cyber attacks. If you would, if you got an attack coming from North Korea going to the White House, these guys are working very, very hard to defend it, to neutralize the threat. That's one. Number two is to attack back, to hack the North Korean um, grid, bring them down. That is illegal if you were to do it. Yes, okay. Um, the USC laws prohibits you attacking the adversaries. You cannot hack the hackers. If you can hack, you, the only thing you can do is you can report it back to the authorities. Whether uh, Right now it's the FBI. All right, but this division, this job is only one thing, to bring the grid of the um, adversaries down. Now, uh, I was at the RSA conference this year. There was an interesting quote by the FBI director, okay? So he said, um, they have the US Cybercom, they have 60, okay, 
uh, readiness program in embassies around the world. 60 readiness programs. This is called cyber offensive readiness program. So if, for example, if Russia was to launch an attack to bring down the banks of the United States, for example, shut down the grid, shut down the networks, or shut down the cable that's connecting between the continents, fiber optic cables, undersea cables, these guys are ready to counter strike. FBI director made the statement. And the whole, we were like, oh my God. That means like, you have an embassy in Israel, you had an embassy in the UK, the, I mean, the, the popular countries around the world, Japan, Australia. You mean have a cyber cell and it's waiting to launch an attack? Absolutely, yes, guys, take it from me. Okay, all right. Now, look at the slide. The US national defense budget, okay? So that includes Pentagon and DOD put together. Okay, the military, uh, aeronautics, Navy, uh, the entire fleet of USS vehicle around the world, all the, ex you know, the expenses goes under this budget. This is the national budget in the United States, and this budget is uh, uh, 2021, okay? Trump uh, authorized it, this increased by 10%. $740 billion. Out of that, the Cyber Command, okay, gets only $610 million. You think that's a lot, but actually for me, it's a peanuts because China spends a similar uh, division within the country, $3 billion. Okay. <laughs> where is 610, where is $3 billion? The Chinese have upper hand right now, you know what I'm saying? All right, so this is what Cybercom looks like. They have 5,000 plus employees, okay? 5,000 professionals working with technologies from the NSA, from the FBI, from uh, the CAA, I have no idea. Working in a secret cell with secret uh, programs and hacking technologies and defending the national infrastructure of the country. What's infrastructure? Las Vegas, for example, the grid. You want to bring the power uh, completely, you want to shut it down, or you want to shut down, and the adversary want to shut down immigration systems, for example, you scan your passport and you get an authentication tokens, um, whether you're allowed to get inside the system or not. Or how about, you know, the biggest uh, threat right now is the banking industry. If the banks go down, so is the economy, right? So that is the real picture of a cybercom. These guys are like badass, really badass, right? And um, these are military officials being trained on uh, anti-cyber espionage. Now, what is cyber espionage? What is the term means, right? So you, cyber espionage, you're talking about Israel and Iran? Yes. You're talking about Russia and UK? Yes. You talk about uh, countries like, um, you know, Jakarta, Indonesia, and uh, against um, Malaysia or Singapore or Philippines, or Philippines against China because of a dispute with the island? Yes. It's happening, all right? And uh, China uses the term, look at this one, eight King Kongs, okay? Because if you want a dominant status in the world stage, it's not about the buildings, it's not about cities, it's not about the roads you have, it's not about number of um, consumers you have, it's about the technology leadership. So right now, the wave is definitely in the US side. So you have uh, Apple, Cisco, Google, IBM, Intel, Microsoft, Oracle, Qualcomm. And if these guys deny access to the technologies to the Chinese, this is exactly what Trump administration is doing with the, what we call trade deals. Okay, so if you don't uh, safeguard my intellectual property in China, I'm not, I'm gonna put a stop to these companies doing business with you. That's called the power, economic power. So China definitely doesn't like it. So they said, how we can evolve to that level, how can we build local companies? Right now, is um, the US government is accusing, okay? So I'm not saying it's, um, um, it's just I'm making that statement, but you know, I'm just reading it for you for legal reasons. US government have accused playing openly, even Trump was going on and on, that, you know, uh, with the Chinese government military cyber attacks steal intellectual property from US companies. Is it true? Let me tell you right now, yes. Say, there, there are so many indictments in the FBI. Just go to the FBI site and you will see how many state um, agents in these countries, you know, North Korea and China have been indicted, not arrested, 
Okay, charges have been filed. I want to give an example. Okay, I'll just give one example. There are so many events income side based penalty. All right, Airbus. Clearly, Airbus, Airbus has the leadership when it comes to the aviation industry. So uh, if you look at planes, you know, A380, or you look at 777, you look at um, uh, commercial fleet, the private jets, some of the components or all of the components come from Airbus Industries, okay? Because they hold the patents, they hold the technologies, they hold the secrets, right? Now, um, Airbus was hacked. I'm gonna show you how they did it. This was last year's story. Airbus was a hack through supply VPNs. I think my previous speaker, Ras, gave a beautiful checklist. He went on, you know, you, should, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this in VPN, you know, you should make sure that, you know, it's vetted and blah, 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 and so on. Huge list. This is serious. So Airbus was hacked through VPN. How, how did it happen? You know very well, is um, uh, Airbus employees, they're carrying the uh, Windows laptop or a Mac laptop, I don't know. Right, so they have a policy requirement they have to use VPN to access the suppliers. All right, so what VPN? VPN is going to download a tool, right? Okay, so whether you, do, you get from a strong VPN, you get from a third parties, or you get from something else and so on. So the VPN is a software that also needs fixing. So once you install a VPN, nobody just goes and bothers and you know, you know, installing patches. Some of the VPNs don't even do auto patch. So the Chinese hackers hack the VPN. So when Airbus employees downloaded the VPN and uh, the backdoor was already there and infiltrated the entire network. Now, what did they do? What did the Chinese hackers do? What did they steal? Why Airbus? Why did they want to hack Airbus? Because of this. Yes. The Chinese government, they want to compete with Airbus, but they want to build their own technology by building their own plane. And they called it Comac C919. And the problem is, you simply cannot build a plane and expect to fly around the world. It just doesn't work. The system doesn't work like that. Because you need to get certification. Okay, you need to make sure your plane is, has airworthiness. Make sure it has safety protocols in. And make sure the engine, it's tested and, um, you know, and, uh, and ensured during an emergency. You can stall and then put the, all the aviations and bells and whistles there. So the Chinese hackers have been struggling to get the certification of the US authorities so that they could sell it to countries like Venezuela and Pakistan, you name it, right? So they could, it's been always rejected. No, 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 we won't give it to you. So what they did is they use a VPN hack to steal documents related to certification. But how does Airbus get the certification? So what is the certification we're talking about is this. Hold on. Is, uh, there you go. The Federal Aviation Administrations, they have a certification for aircrafts. They have certifications for their tires. They have certifications for engine from Rolls-Royce and so on, right? So they always been failing. Why? Look at this. This is C919. Cyber espionage example. Now, the Chinese government, what they did is they built the entire plane from components from third parties. Look at that. The tire comes from where? Michelin. The landing gears from Honeywell, US company. And fire direct, fire direction from Kiddo, British company. And um, then you've got wing anti icing, then you got an engine, then you got an engine thrust reverser, weather radar, electricity systems, radar cover, and from various companies put together. Now, the um, the yeah, the aeronautical division, okay, uh, in the Chinese, uh, uh, what do you call the uh, the wing had a problem. How all this put together? So when you look at Airbus, they had all these technologies working smoothly and seamlessly, easy. So they stole the certification process to understand how everything fits together in like a jigsaw puzzle, right? And uh, of course, um, um, okay, when this happened, the Trump administration has to give a stern warning, okay? And uh, 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 in the subsequent um, uh, repeat of this particular offense, and they will kick China from the WTO. That was serious, right? And Airbus was really crying, okay? All right, 
So let's move on. So I mentioned about cyber espionage. I mentioned about the cyber calm and, and let's see. Today, if you look at the attacks that's happening, it's not you and me. It's not some kids sitting in a basement, okay? It's not about uh, hobbies launching attacks, no. Because today, the malicious hacking attacks are the result of organized cyber criminals, okay? These are professionals, real professionals. Nothing like what the skills that you and me have. So if your skill is 0 0.10 in the scale of 1 to 100, and uh, let's say your skill is 2, these guys' skills are 110. Exceed the scale. All right. So <laughs> this is a mind-boggling report created by Kaspersky and Deloitte. All right. So uh, they came up with the cyber crime totals 1.5 trillion in revenue annually, every year, 1.5 trillion. Now, if you want to put that number in a perspective, if you take Walmart, okay, the biggest company in the US, and then you add Apple to it, okay, which is $700 um, uh, billion dollars company, then you add a Microsoft to it. Put all these companies' revenue per year is less than what these guys make. Now, you tell me, who would want to give this up? That's an amazing business model. Okay, hacking is a profession. It's illegal. Of course, it's a profession that brings in tons of money. Okay, you put Tesla, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Walmart, combined revenue, right? Now, I'm going to give you the breakdown. Take a look at it. Okay, now, ransomware brings $1 billion, okay, every year, okay, for these hackers. Hacking, um, you know, cyber group, cybercrime group. Now, data trading, $160 billion, selling illegal stolen credit cards, person's birth address, including passport, $160 billion. And um, then you got a crimeware, okay, this is what you and me are interested in, okay, Dog, bots, DDoS attacks, and so on. I connect with these guys to learn about the techniques so that I can include an RCC class, okay, expose them. And cyber threat, trade secret, Patents, intellectual property, okay? And um, uh, that brings about $500 billion. Now, it's easy. Look at this. Is um, organized cyber criminals, they have what we have a team leader, coders, intrusion specialists, call center workers, data miners, somebody specialist. Now, let me let me give an example. So a bank, you know, the employees of a bank, you know, they get up in the morning, you know, get dressed, eat the breakfast, they go to the bank and, you know, check ins in the front of the computers and they work and apply, you know, process loans and at five o'clock they go back. So this is what they do every single day in a bank. Similarly, North Korea has about 2,000 hackers, okay, working professionally full time in a huge building, okay, as a normal day to day job. So each hack is given, hey, your target is XYZ bank. That's it. I don't care what you do. I don't, um, how long it takes. Go ahead and probe everything about the bank. IP address, you have the names, employees, whatever you can. Until you find a weakness to get inside. Hey, that weakness happens to be an employee had just lost the phone in a taxi. And I happen to get it. Okay, that has to find authentication. Hey, my God, that guy is an administrator. Okay, similarly, so these guys, day in and day out, they work in a company. That company's job is hacking. How do you defend against that? If somebody is, has a microscope on you, 24 by 7, let me tell you guys, you're toast. You're finished. Because a normal a human doesn't have that kind of vigilance. Okay, they leave the technology to handle that for you. So, North Korean hackers. Last year, they bought $2 billion in revenue. Okay, Pyongyang's pocket. That guy is, come on, that guy is sipping the finest uh, cognac, man. Finest scotch in his beautiful mansion. He is driving the finest stolen Porsches from South Korea. So that guy, he's not selling anything. That guy is not doing research. That guy is not creating a product. He's just making money with ransom attacks. How does it work? Very easy. If you have 1 million computers, uh, a mom and pop sitting in um, uh, Michigan and 70 year old guy and so on. And if you were to intrude and compromise and say, say, you know what, I have 
encrypted all your grandchildren's photos. Okay, you got 100 grandchildren's photos right there. It's all encrypted. You pay me only $200, only $200 to unlock it for you. I'm not going to ask for millions of dollars like what you get from a, all the state agents. Only $200. Oh my God, they will pay. They'll pay. And how much does it bring in? $200 multiplied by 1 million victims gives you $200 million. That's it. All right. And an interesting article by New York Times. It was fantastic. All right. So where do you get these uh, illegal stuff? You have to go to a marketplace. That marketplace is the one is flourishing. Okay. That's the one which is selling like hot cake. Nobody's trying to stop it because you stop it, another side pops up. That marketplace is the dark web, all right? So dark web is uh, where there's an illegal content. You can get drugs, you can buy. Okay, at the top, what you see is snake poison, cobra. You could buy, okay? And then uh, you could buy guns and you could buy really deep web, dark deep web, child pornography. You could buy ecstasy tablets and then um, you and me, as a cybersecurity professionals, we are looking for bots. We are looking for, uh, and I usually go there, not for all this junk. I want exploits, right? So why? I'm not going to hack anybody. We don't do that. We are legal guys. Just to expose the technology to our students. All right. So what do you do? Go to the dark web. This is it. You need a door and you need to go to the dark web. Okay, not one pocket place, guys. There are like hundreds of marketplace and we have a list and our team updates every single week now what one of the interesting thing what you see here is look for software and malware and this is what i'm interested exploits and botnets yeah malware a little bit but mostly exploits okay exploits for whatsapp exploits for anything OD exploits so look at this uh so what you get here is all the illegal sub bank of germany Okay, and a US Bank American Express card account clone. Um, it's, it's on and on and on. And you pay the money in Bitcoin, they will give you the two. Simple as that, including botnets. So I, and I'm not so stupid, right? My own uh, export and hacking tool. If why reinvent the wheel when the wheel is already there for me to purchase? I told you $1.5 trillion is right here. Okay, there's only one marketplace. So what I show you, hundreds of marketplaces where you have. And that's what we do in Rochester, in RCCE class. All right, so let's move on. Uh, that's the, uh, uh, okay. Now, uh, yesterday, uh, we had an interesting presentation. And uh, uh, yes, I'm gonna use a nickname. And um, he gave a, a beautiful um, statistics about fishing. And uh, Vasan Davis, during his uh, opening speech, he said 95% of malware was delivered by phishing attacks. 95, all right? Uh, sorry guys, I, I just made a mistake, it's not 90, 95. So phishing attack is the only way for you to gain access to a remote system, okay, which is across the globe. And this is the reason why if this US election, the government is so worried, they don't want the same thing that happened four years ago, Russia. Russia hacked the DNC through phishing attack, and exposed the 35,000 he email. Now you know what happened, the result of the election. So Microsoft and Google, they're going to all this um, DNC and says, you know, let me take care of your emails. I will proxy and filter it and making sure the email is authentic, nothing fishy before I drop it in the inbox. Yes, free service, go and check it out, Google. All right, so how do they hack so many companies? Let me show you a demo. Okay, now today, uh, if you want to, um, uh, you, you see hackers extracting uh, millions of um, records, millions of username and passwords, millions of personal details, names and all this stuff. How do they do it? They're not, they're not hacking. If, if I'm sitting in North Korea, China, I'm not going to hack every single computer uh, around the globe, one million computers. That's, uh, yeah, I can, but you know, that's too difficult. It's too difficult, time consuming. So here is... What interesting thing is, today, everybody's in the cloud. Ras was talking about working from home, right? So nothing is lo located uh, locally. Your files are in Dropbox, your emails are in Gmail in the cloud, and your meetings are stored, recordings are stored in Microsoft Teams, and your messages are in Slack, 
okay? And your office documents are Office 365. Nothing is so locally. So what if a bank, or uh, you log in on the bank to download something, I don't have to hack here, I hack the cloud. Okay, let me show you a demo. Let me show you a demo for the beats. Okay, a simple demo. Uh, all these demos are from RCC labs, guys. I'm not showing anything that's not in the RCC, right? So picture this. So what you have here is a website. Uh, it's a travel website, okay? So let's say you have 1 million customers booking flights. So take a look at this. So I'm gonna search for some flights, uh, flying from some city, let's say you got Delta, you got United, you got Lufthansa, and uh, you have uh, uh, the hotels and so on. Now, how is this application built, Dockers, right? So what I will do is as Hackam, I will inject my code inside the Kubernetes containers, or a Docker containers, that's what the most popular attack platform is right now. Or simply, if you can access the web server, inject the JavaScript code inside the index.html. All right, so what happens is, okay. So here, uh, I have my sensors running here, all right? This is called the command and control center. So you picture this is running in North Korea. North Korean hackers are monitoring. So, so they go to a company located in uh, San Diego. It's a travel company. Okay, they have millions of customers. So they have any intrusions. This is probably a weak um, password, admin password or something. They get access and they inject a code inside over here. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type something here. I'm going to say, uh, okay, login. All right. Uh, Haja the great hacker.com. All right. And the password is. I love RCC certification. All right. So um, when you can do a sign up and um, it'll ask me want to sign up with the emails. I want to log into Facebook and so on. So here is the thing. What do I type here? What are for flights I'm searching? It's all recorded and sent, okay, to my command control center. See, new record is created. I'm going to show you. It says, hey, Haja the great hacker. Low RCC certification, okay? So I'll give another example. This is um, uh, COVID-19 uh, coronavirus uh, charts. People love to say what to do, what not to do, and so on. How to do a cell check. And um, I'm gonna say, uh, Aditya, give me, a, give me some text randomly, I'll type. So people know it's not staged. Okay. Yeah, give me a bank account number. Okay, I'm putting on the back my in the chat. Okay, where is the chat? Let me take a look. Back there. Okay, right at the bottom. Yeah, where, where are you? I just sent it. Okay, uh, you said my Swiss bank. Okay, all right. So what I'm going to do is, <laughs> I don't run a form there. I click on it. I cop. I keep typing my Swiss bank account number is what is that? We can read it for me. Seven. Three, six, two, eight, something, something, random numbers. All right. I just yeah. put something on the, on the page. So what you see here, I'm going back to command control center. No record is created. I'm going to refresh the page. New record is created. And I click uh, this one. Is that your account number? 73 starting with this? Yep, that's the one. My Swiss that's bank account number. Yeah. So there is a MySQL database in which you have more information about the session and the cookies and the very the IP address and so on. Okay, so this is what hackers are doing now. They're not even hacking you; they're hacking the cloud, especially during the pandemic. Okay, that's what um, Ras was um, uh, talking about. How oh, the pandemic is um, uh, causing a lot of problems. All right, so let's move on. So what you saw was a, a simple example. And uh, we have uh, multiple websites to prove this point, okay? Like I said, RCC is really complex, all right? There are hundreds and hundreds of attack web sites. All right, now threat intelligence, okay? So what we are launching, uh, uh, we're previewing this in the next uh, two weeks we'll be launching uh, for the public, threat intelligence. So what is threat intelligence, okay? All right, gray noise is a system that collects, analyze and labels Omnidirectly internet scans and attack activity around the world. What they have is they have 120 sensors placed across 
you know, data centers. Data centers in London, in India, in, in Chennai, and New Delhi, and Singapore, and uh, South Carolina, and New York, and so on. So these data centers, they do a scanning. Okay, that's legal. Okay, how many IP addresses is scanned? Oh my God. Uh, IPv4 has 4.6 billion IP addresses. So if each computer takes about like, you know, uh, 30 million, you could scan all the private, sorry, public IP addresses in IPv4. That's exactly what gray noise thread does. And it gives you a beautiful dashboard and says, you know what, uh, which ports are open on which IP address. That's all it does. It doesn't even check the vulnerability. That's your job. Okay. So let me show you a demonstration in a minute. All right. Uh, so what we use is we use um, this and a shadow IO to build our own threat intelligence center. So this is the gray noise. Okay. It's a beautiful thread intel. Uh, subscribe to it. We pay the money to subscribe to it. So we receive the data. So we have like 20 terabytes of data, including the malware samples out of a disposal in our R&D center in India. You do that. Now, what you do is just click on the cheat sheet. So I want to check. Okay. All right. Uh, so let me run RDP scanners. So show me which of the 4.6 billion IP addresses are exposing RDP protocol. All right. So there you go. So what it does is it shows you by section, by section, by section, and says, hey, this computer, this computer, this computer. Hey, they're running FTP scanner. They have yeah, FTP put open, HTTP, IMAP, and so on. So what we do is we collect all this information, right? And we built up our own threat intel, right? Not only from gray noise, and we have from uh, more than six companies. I can't uh, reveal the sources, but this is public, so this, uh, you can try it on your own. And I have to build what we call our Rochester's own cyber threat intelligence map. So what you saw, Ras was there. Ras was in a, in a beautiful class. That was a class I taught RCC many times before. Me and Aditya were there. And at the back, you know, you had a lot of dashboards right there with the fire eye and Kaspersky and so on. Okay, so they have sensors. They have sensors, real because there's a real product. So what we have is we have built our own cyber threat, cyber threat intelligence map with the data from the third parties. Okay, let me show you that particular data. So this is our Cyber 3 Intelligence dashboard. Okay, so um, we have license with the virus total. We have license with the uh, uh, tons of uh, cryptography tools, of vulnerability scanners, and we use a CV database to build something on our own. All right, so let me show you the threat map. Scanner.net, just go to Earth. Okay, you could try right now. And um, what you see, it's a beautiful live attack. Right, and uh, the attack is taking place. Uh, there you go, it's spinning. Okay, look at this. All right, so as the attack occurs, so it shows you on the map, and we have multiple versions of this map. Where there's a 3D map, where they can go in um, Google Maps and so on. So, this is RCC cyber threat map. Okay, and we teach our students how to build on your own, how to build this map, how to build the threat intel. So, for your companies. Right. So one of the things what you have to do is you cannot be a certification company if you're not in R&D. OK, if you don't play the same game as what IBM, all these guys does. So this is uh, Rochester's uh, uh, Cyber Threat Intel. OK, and I will be launching in the next two weeks. Let me tell you, the animation is going to be awesome. We use the metal library. OK, program in Ruby Rails. Oh, my God. OK, and uh, we worked two months on this particular project because the data we have is uh, mind-boggling. 20 tetrabytes of malware, guys, real malware. Okay, and of course, we're going, to, we're going to dark web as well to collect the latest exploits put together. All we do this is for one reason, for our RCC students, that's it, okay? We just want RCC students to be cutting edge. I'll come into that in a minute. COVID-19, oh my God, COVID-19 was the talk everywhere. When we go to conferences, nobody's going to back out with the mention COVID-19 because COVID-19 changed our lifestyle. Okay, here is the latest statistics starting today, this morning, I updated it. 9.4 million infections around the world with almost 480,000 uh, deaths. Out of that, 100,000, only US, 100,000. Another 100,000 is in Brazil. 
right? The rest are on the world. It's really on the rise. The COVID-19 pandemic changed everything. Our life has turned upside down. If I was infected with the COVID-19, don't expect me to be in front of your class. Don't expect me to be in front of your conference talking to you. I'll be in bed. When COVID-19 doesn't, um, uh, what he called is, um, uh, doesn't uh, filter whether you're old or you're young or you're uh, weak or you're healthy. Everybody. So when the, while the world is struggling with the coronavirus outbreak, many countries have implemented precautionary measures. Schools have been closed. Now, yesterday, uh, Dr. Venetia was talking about uh, the challenges university faces because universities are more prone to hacking because of lack of budget, lack of resources, lack of skills, and most importantly, it's the campus is widely open for anybody to walk in. Okay, you don't see in companies. Companies don't open. IBM doesn't open many doors. Say, please walk in and give me registration. Now, organizers have enabled the employees to work remotely. That's what exactly Ras was talking about. So, which is your medium of communication? Not telephone, not your chat, not the SMS, video communication platform okay that is vcp all right so uh today hackers are using dashboards to deploy malware so for example look at this so you see i have a dashboard here and uh, people want to know how many people are dead how many people are alive how many people are infected and so on so that's the live dashboard okay and uh Rochester, we also have our own dashboard and uh, you will see on linkedin post okay we update uh, daily to give to our students, RCC students, what is like. Cameron has zero infections. Uh, so is uh, Niger, zero, my God. Libya, Egypt, okay, Egypt should have, so, yeah, uh, 6,000 total cases and so on, okay? So what hackers are doing is, hey, if you want this particular dashboard, please download a small tool on your phone or your computer that will, you know, update dynamically, that will refresh the lifestyle. This is static one week ago. Okay. So they are using human emotions to trick uh, people to click on links. Okay. And of course, if you're old, you will do that. All right. So this was um, yesterday's news. Yesterday's news. School's getting hacked. Okay. And of course, um, you have to watch her talk, which gives you a list of uh, uh, structure, what to do, what not to do, and so on. Uh, you uh, Aditya, what are you saying? You need to. No, no, I'm up. talking to the next speaker. All right, don't worry, I have a lot of stuff to do, so please speaker. give me some time. Okay, I'm just getting started. All right, so this was yesterday's news. The, next speaker. the FBI, you know, uh, made an announcement warning. K-12 schools of ransomware attacks via RDP remote desktop protocol. The FBI issued a security alert warning uh, ransomware threat. Why? There's an increased ransom attack during the coronavirus pandemic because schools are transitioning to distance learning. Just like us in Rochester, we killed classroom. That's it. Classroom is dead. Nobody wants to go for classroom and, and pay money and sit in a class and a boring lectures. Okay, people can do right at home. The same slide, same talk. Why the hell I had to book a flight and check into a hotel and eat breakfast and go there, just listen for three hours lecture? This changed everything, not only Rochester, the schools in the US. So what they do is they haven't figured it out what cybersecurity precautions to take when I'm trying to log on to a remote, uh, um, you know, uh, access. That's what Ras was talking about this morning. Okay, this is important because of this. What you have is attacks. Now, here is a beautiful guys. You're going to love this. This is a beautiful live attack, a map. Okay, uh, for. Only K-12 schools in the United States. Once K-12 is a primary school, okay? All right, so India is like 10 standard and then in, um, in, the, in Malaysia is, can, can, can somebody guys update me what Malaysia is equal to 10 standard in India? Anybody put in the chat? Anyone? Oh, okay, all right. Okay, good. All right, so uh, it shows you a live chart where the attack is taking place right now. And uh, it's going to give you details for the last three years. I'm going to go live and show you guys. Uh, I have loaded the particular page. The link is in my slide. So you, when you get a recording, you can see it. It's here. Okay, this is it. So this is a K-12. Okay, so I'm going to go and uh, look for New York. 
how many schools were hacked in New York? K-12 schools. Okay, just as I go through that, and our Google map comes up beautifully. Okay, Baltimore. Okay, Baltimore is good. Okay, click on that. It says, hey, about 150 Baltimore school employees fell victim to online phishing attacks. Okay, and uh, that's really bad. How about uh, uh, Manhattan? I think Manhattan guys should be, you know, should be tech savvy, right? And uh, if you go and, uh, oh my God, I had to filter to Brooklyn. Uh, all right, look at Medway. That is it. Okay. Hosting a Zoom video conference. Oh God, my God. <laughs> In fact, there are GoDaddy reported 1,500 Zoom based domain registrations. Okay. So take a look at it, guys. This is an amazing diagram. Okay. This is exactly what Rochester is building for threat intelligence. Okay. You're going to see that in two weeks. Better chart than this. All right. So let's move on. Okay. The link is in my slides. So if you guys want to see it. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, video conferencing. Okay. I told you. So today, everybody is using video conference to communicate. We use video conference every day to talk to my staffs. I talk to suppliers. Okay. So without video conferencing, I'm dead. All right. So almost here is the thing. Say this to yourself. Almost everyone communicates by video conferencing. It, it, it was not even possible. It, it, was, it was not even you know, um, realistic a uh, few uh, six months ago, but today this is mandatory. So with that, okay, how do you hack? So I have done that. Okay, so this is part of the uh, RCC class. So when you can attend the class, you will get a lab to do this. So uh, let me show you. Uh, so what I do is um, I have my own video conferencing system, okay, based on Jitsi open source, because sometimes I need to speak to hackers. Uh, meet, it's called. Uh, So this is my personal, not companies, Rochester's, my personal video conferencing system based on Jitsi. So Jitsi is open source. It's in a rosé. And um, I downloaded it. I messed it on the source code, fixed something over there. So that when I want to speak to somebody, a hacker, in a really uh, uh, very um, uh, secure manner, I use VMeet. Okay, nothing is recorded, nothing is sent to third parties. It's really secure. So uh, most of the guys, they don't use computers to talk. So they use a tool. So I created a tool. I wrote it. It's called uh, vmeet.apk. So all you have to do is if you're in a, uh, because of the time here, uh, if you run the visual um, uh, Android studio, you're going to say emulation there. You install this, it's downloading. Okay, you see this? So it gets installed. What you see here, let me go back to the screen. All right, it'll, get, it'll be installed in a nice icon. It's called VMeet. Okay, and I have two versions of this tool. One version is beautiful, nothing fishy, nothing malicious. I use it with my friends. Okay, I use it with the uh, hackers around the world. But I have another version called Android hacked version. Okay, what it does is, it's a backdrop built-in video talk. Everything will work. You know, you can talk, you can share slides, you can have a video uh, chat and uh, uh, like, just like a normal Zoom. But look at this. Whatever you log on to Google, okay, everything is tracked, just like I showed you on a website, you know, uh, tracking. Uh, look at this. I purposely um, uh, messed around with this. The app was hacked by Jaggy Boy. All right. So, I'll hide this and give it to you, and you will be talking to someone you have no idea, okay? You are revealing too much information to a third party, which is me, all right? Because why video uh, app? Because video app asks you permission for GPS location, audio, video, slide sharing, oh my God, recording. It basically asks you permission for file access, everything. So people think, oh, this app doesn't need all these things, they'll give access, all right? So by the way, this is the lab from RCC class and you'll be programming, you'll be developing in your Android studio, how to do this. All right, so next one is that Adel was giving a fantastic presentation yesterday. I was, it was mind boggling. 
was so impressed. He, he shot his personal experience when he lands in Paris and he, he's four beeps and Facebook says, hey, welcome to Paris. And uh, when he goes to the hotel, he sh the Facebook shows the, the photo of the hotel and says, hey, welcome to this particular uh, facility. And he was worried. Okay, but GDPR requires you have to disclose what you're doing with the client. So, uh, so what we do is we actually, you know, hack that. Uh, we create our own Trojan, our own GPS tracking, just like Google and Facebook. Why Google and Facebook has to receive all these alerts? What can we do ourselves? So we exactly did that in our CC class. So how does it work? Okay, um, um, it's the same app that you um, uh, don't like APK, just like we did similar to that. Once we install it. Let me show you live. Let me show you live. Hold on for a minute. It scares the hell out of you. Okay. Um, that's only for. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Yeah, this is it. Only for RCC students. Okay. You come to a class, we'll actually show you how to program all these things. Okay. And um, you see this. Uh, these are all the phones that's been infected. So when you click on a phone, it'll uh, automatically ping the server which is, uh, where is that server? Let me show you right here. Give me a minute. Uh, I'm going to my Rosé. Okay, let me close this. Okay, to I finished. Corona map, I finished. Okay. Uh, let me close this, close this, this, this. Okay, so this is the GPS tracker. So all you have to do is type in the IP address and the port and it, it runs hidden. Of course, uh, the Google map doesn't show because I'm not running HTTPS here. Like I'm running local host. And if you're running a uh, HTTPS, you get a map right here. Uh, these are infections and where you're going, what you're doing, who you're making calls to. So what are Facebook and um, Google does? Hey, I can do it, man. As a hack, I can do it. I can write it and deploy it. It scares the hell out of you. Simple, right? So this is a live example. And uh, we use, a, uh, look at this. You're going from this location to this location. And uh, what actually you're doing, and here's the thing. Turn on the seat map. See, I will show you the building. Okay, what are you in? All right. So what privacy are you talking about? What Google are you talking about? What Google does, I can do even better because I have the source code. All right. So it's like one of the things what we do is um, we don't even talk. We actually teach you how things are done with the concept. Planning GPS bug is a piece of cake. Now let's talk about another beautiful presenter, Dr. Peter. Dr. Peter was almost in tears. Okay, he's crying. He's talking about the skill set of cybersecurity professionals. They're so pathetic, really pathetic guys. So bad, okay? And um, let me tell you, this is the statistics in the US. The demand for cybersecurity professionals is 4 million, 4 million unfilled positions, okay? US alone. And India needs 500,000 professionals. Now, they're not asking for cybersecurity professionals. They're using the, mid, the word called skilled in quotes. I'm going to use the air quotes right now. You can't see it, but I'm really right now, okay, in front of the computer. Skilled cybersecurity professionals, there aren't any. All you have is a Mickey Mouse guys. They don't want Mickey Mouse guys. So what the US government is doing, what the US companies are doing, they're posting on LinkedIn, hey, we want a cybersecurity professional to process the Splunk uh, logs and push it to Apache and move that to uh, Azure to read into Sentinel Threat Intelligence. And they pray to God, please God, please God, I want the right guy to come in. So all they get is these Mickey Mouse guys. All right, so Rochester, uh, four years back, so I decided to reinvent the wheel. Okay, so Aman Bao, he made a beautiful presentation. He used a word called rebellion. Innovation is equal to rebellion. You need to question the rules and you need to change the game, right? If you don't do that, you cannot change the status quo. The status quo today in cybersecurity skills and certification is same old, same old for the last 20 years. Okay, they've been squeezing and cashing with the brand, nothing is what the industry wants. That's exactly what Peter was crying. What I get is Mickey Mouse guys. What I get is unskilled people. They call them cybersecurity professionals. So today, companies are not hiring hackers. Nobody wants to hire a hacker. People want to hire cybersecurity engineers. Who are these guys? This is the definition. They identify threats, vulnerabilities in systems and software. That's good. But here is the one I highlighted in bold. Developing and implementing high-tech solutions. Developing keyword, 
what do you mean development programming scripting writing code okay and defend against hacking malware ransomware inside threats and all types of cybercrime show me one guy who does that okay and a guy goes to a five day class oh my god i was a cybersecurity professional i'm a ch i can do wonderful pathetic nonsense that's what peter was crying i'm getting all this you know idiots i don't want these idiots all right so cybersecurity engineer is a person who can do develop write code implement solutions and they are not many this is what dr peter wants dr peter is a partner of rochester and he is running classes there and he loves our program and what you need is what you don't want is a mickey mouse professionals right you want real cyber skill engineers and this is what we came up with in the last four years and we said enough is enough we need to go and challenge the status quo we need to reinvent the wheel and we need to set a new standard and we was extremely successful the status quo doesn't like it because when we try to change something it's affecting their revenue stream they are fighting back not with innovation they're fighting back with all the junk accusations oh you're not big you're not ansi you're not this and you're not that okay all right so here we go this is what engineer is if you have this dress code because jodhi was talking about attitude yesterday okay she's a ceo and she says as a as a ceo you need attitude you need confidence you need to be to speak right you need to look good this is all the positive vibes jodhi was giving check shirt slim tight trendy and uh, oh, i look like aditya right <laughs> aditya does it look like you adi i would say hopefully yeah okay yeah, so do, I'm say, I, i train you like that isn't it yes see he's laughing right so he's a cyber security engineer and when he goes to atnt and he speaks people listen okay all right so if you are a lady hacker that's your dress code that's your professional skills so how do you get the skills dr peter was asking so peter was like he was so sad watch his presentation he was so sad because he was right not only him many of my friends in the fortune finder companies asking the same question give me a guy who can do all this who can do microsoft azure programming can do ruby rails ember express js laravel python django aws google cloud react new js and spring okay so when i bring a guy who call them cyber security engineer cyber security professional all he does is fire up a kali and launch in that and he says i'm a hacker you know what i do i said get the hell out of my face i kick him out of the right of the door okay i'm i'm a boss i have a company to run and i will never let these guys to come inside and damage my reputation that's what dr peter was saying so this is the skills you need you need no interest in java and groovy and go and so this is what what you do in rcc class we create modules to teach a professional if you're going to have hard a signature on your certificate you better know all these techniques so when you have this you get your position in the industry now people ask me hey hacha how the hell am i going to learn all this it's too much work okay i need to take multiple classes and i call laziness many of the guys i meet they're so lazy all they want to do is hey give me a computer to hack let me do a magic i get 100000 per year do you know how much work you need to do to get that much money so the question is how do we learn don't even get away from your home you can sit in home and learn one example i'll show you right now that's called gloat io it's open source it's featured in our its entire platform is located in our uh, uh, the next speaker is he's saying i cannot wait uh okay so i have another uh, 30 slides okay so i'll end it okay let's okay go. uh okay uh, what i do is uh, uh i just go to the next slide next slide deep fakes i just want to lab on this uh, i'll just go to the slides guys let's end it okay all right um, uh i want to lab on this for you guys um how do you run artificial intelligence on a machine to get uh, uh, a video change to a person okay, as far of our rtc class so that the original photo so i just want to run an algorithm to change the deep fake photo uh okay the so same thing with the videos okay that's the original video change it with the 
Nicolas Cage video. Uh, I could do that the entire movie. Okay, that's exactly what this uh, uh, demo was. I take a Mission Impossible movie. I have almost a like hundred images of Kate, Nicolas Cage, and then fit fed with artificial intelligence, neuro uh, Nvidia engine, GAN engine, and it changes the face of every single frame of Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible. Right. So that I want to show a little bit of that. Okay, all right. Uh, so I come from RCC class, guys. Uh, we have like two hundred thousand images uh, in a celebrate data set. I just want to show you that uh, data set. Uh, Right. Um, keep it simple. Uh, thank you, guys. Please stand. Happy? Yeah, yes, sir. Sorry, Happy. sorry, I had to cut it short, guys. But the next is uh, yeah. So are these thank, working on a thank you so or... much. For the... Yeah. Uh, okay. There's some some of them are asking you to continue for another ten minutes, but then uh, we have to uh, give up for the next speaker. So I'll try and slot you in for another slot tomorrow. I think we might have. Uh,